certainly fascinating research that really is already changing lives. I talked about that with the man who led this study, Dr. Stephen Badalak. He is a professor at the University of Pittsburgh Department of Surgery. Now, these patients who, who have these injuries are, are basically stuck, uh, depending upon what muscle uh, group is involved. If it's a lower limb, you know, they've got some degree of ambulatory or weight-bearing problem. If it's an upper limb, they, uh, you know, can't, can't use their arms very well. So these five patients all happen to be lower limb, and um, they, they, they couldn't do the things that you and I take for granted. You know, getting out of this chair, for example, without help, walking with a cane, uh, picking something up off the floor, getting, taking stairs. They couldn't do these things. Uh, because they had lost so much muscle tissue. In fact, a couple of them had actually Ready? considered amputation because they felt like they were just basically dragging, uh, dragging their limb around. Uh, all five of them, they suffered from, some of them had uh, up to 80, 90 percent loss of their thigh muscle. Others had lost a majority of their lower of the muscle below their knee, and they, uh, they obviously were severely, uh, they were suffering. And so what did you see? I mean, uh, you're, you're talking about people who were frustrated, disappointed, uh, months, some, in some cases years, hadn't seen any progress. What kind of progress did they see? Well, <clears throat> so th these patients had had multiple surgeries. They'd had all sorts of physical re rehabilitation and, and had basically given up. Yes. You know, the first couple of weeks after surgery is tough because we're pushing them hard in physical therapy. Uh, but then after about two, three weeks, they start to see a, a noticeable difference. And, uh, you know, then... Uh, th that even motivates them more. And most of these patients were pretty young. You know, we're talking about soldiers that got injured in Afghanistan and Iraq, uh, you know, who had, had their whole life ahead of them. And they could tell that this was making a difference. They were throwing away their, the, the canes that they were walking on. They were starting to ride bicycles. They were doing the things, like I said, that you and I take for granted. So that, that's extremely satisfying. You know, for people in my position, it's nice to... Uh, publish papers and get certain grants and so forth, but there's no rush like, it, like there is in seeing patients like this respond. Uh, talk to me about the promise here for people serving in the military, uh, those injured by IEDs or roadside bombs. What kind of people will this help? Well, I think uh, the, the potential for this approach is uh, we've yet to determine the limits because we've taken some of the worst cases, patients that failed the, the, the usual me methods by which we treat these patients. And, um, and then we've made a difference for them. You know, b based on the biology and the science behind it, this really should work best if, if used as the first line of treatment. Uh, and uh, so I think the use of this uh, in the military, for example, as a, uh, at the point of care uh, treatment or the first surgical treatment that they would get would, would really make a, a bigger difference rather than letting the body form a lot of scar tissue and, and the other muscles around it atrophy from disuse and, and, and so forth. Yeah, well, I was going to ask you about that. Uh, you're talking about expansion. I know that you, you, this is a small uh, study group. How quickly can this be out there for, for other people who may be watching this who, who say, wow, this could really change my life? Yeah, the, uh, um, the goal of this uh, approach has always been to make this the type of treatment that would be available to literally anybody. Um, so it's, it's not meant to be specialized treatment at the University of Pittsburgh or some tertiary care center, uh, you know, that uh, only has certain types of doctors or whatever. And, and there's no reason that this couldn't be done every day in, in every hospital that does orthopedic uh, or reconstructive surgery. Um, the, the challenge <clears throat> is that it requires an understanding of the biology because this is much more than simply taking uh, this material and putting at the site of injury and sewing them up and walking away. So there's this combination of disciplines, the reha rehab people, the surgeons, the scientists that need to work together to make this work. But, but, uh, but it does work. And um, so when we, when we uh, roll this out to the greater community, we have to think very carefully about how the everybody's educated, uh, all, all members of the healthcare community and the patients. Uh, both fascinating and promising Dr. Stephen Badalak, thanks so much for joining us from Pittsburgh. You're welcome, thank you.